Hello everyone and welcome to Power Apps for Business Users and Functional Consultants, episode two. In this episode, we'll talk about requirement gathering. Uh, we will touch on app objectives, feature list, uh, how to produce the document, user journeys, etc. But before that, have a look at the intro. Here it is, episode two, requirement gathering. And please keep that in mind that I'm not talking about programming or advanced uh, Power Apps functions or whatever. I just want everybody who do not know how to program should be able to build these app and utilize the Power Apps or Power Platform. Um, so whatever I'm going to talk about will mostly be Canvas apps. If you are a functional consultant, you already know about requirement gathering and how to conduct it, how to conduct the workshops and whatnot. But in case of Power Apps or Canvas App, it is going to be a lot thinner because this is supposed to be faster. So you cannot spend so much time documenting and just talking to so many people like you do in a huge implementation. So let's look at our first topic, which is app objective so we need to understand what's the objective uh, for the app so discuss about this talk to business users talk to the decision makers why do they want to build the app uh, what's the objective behind it what it would solve as a problem so what what is the current problem that they thought of getting an app for these purposes are we going to build this app from scratch or if there is something already existing? What are we doing? Um, so basically things like that. Um, also, do they require any analytics about it? Do like their porting, how many people are using, what are they using mostly on and stuff like that. So you'll have to understand clearly the objective behind this app, which you or your team is going to build. Hence, my first slide was app objective. So keep that in mind, focus on it. As, as consultants and business users, the first thing we must do is understand the objective of our client. Until we have done that, we will not be able to deliver very good outcomes. You will be delivering outcomes for sure, but is it aligned with the objective of my client? That's the most important bit. And hence, I'm talking about understanding the app objective. Number two is user journeys. By this, I mean clearly talking to different users who are going to use this app. Um, so it can be a business user, it can be guests coming to your reception, uh, wherein you want them to enter their details so that you can capture uh, where they're coming from. Are they coming to meet someone? Who are they meeting? Uh, basically stuff like that. So a good example here could be a visitor sign-in app, which I created a video on as well as a blog. Um, so you can look at it, but that app is basically used by guests. So there's no interference of business users, but you might get this requirement wherein people are asking you or your client is asking you to build an app, which is used by both your business users as well as guests coming into the premise or talking to your client. So it might be both. Hence, you need to talk about user journeys. Now, when you are doing your user journeys, if there is a guest involved, you would like to request your client that you meet someone from their client base or customer base or the guest base they have got and talk to them. How would they like to use an app? Would that help them? And what should be their experience? So if you talk to them, it will be great. Uh, you will understand a guest objective as well as the business objectives uh, behind letting the guest use this app. And then you can talk to business users who want to use this app as well. So that's my user journey. So you basically you define user groups. You have some guests there. You have business users there. Now it can be both one of them and others as well it depends if you're doing just a single app for guests as well as business users um, it would be here but if there are multiple apps for different departments using different apps so a good example can be that um, 
your HR department wants to build an app for employee reimbursements using Power Apps, Canvas Apps, uh, infusing AI into it and whatnot. But marketing department wants to capture leads, so they want the guests for visiting the premise into their details. So that can be more than one app as well. So it depends what project you're involved in, what your organization is looking for, completely different, but depends on that. But you'll have to uh, determine the user groups you are going to talk to. Hence, I said user journeys are important here. It's not like um, an application that this is what you're going to use. It is something provided to you that you can build as for the expectations of the users. So user experience is a very critical part of your requirement gathering sessions. Hence user journeys. Okay, moving on. Feature list. So what I'm talking about here is just what the app should do. What, what should be the features? What should be the functionalities, triggers and action and whatnot? So first of all, do they require to log in? Do they need to sign up? When I say they, I mean users, any type of users, be it guests, be it business user or any type of users. Do we have success screens? Do we have failure screens? What kind of forms we have? Do we want lighter forms? Do we want, um, big, big form? When I say big form, I mean a wider screen. So do they need a mobile app or a tablet app? So things like that, because a tablet app would be able to accommodate a lot many fields compared to a mobile app. Although a mobile app can do as well, you'll have to scroll down um, and things like that. So you need to talk about this. So forms and fields. What should be the label? How, how would the navigation work? Um, and I've already talked about functionalities like the triggers and action required out of these forms, out of, out of these screens, whatever you may want to call it. Um, are there any pop-ups? Uh, are there any integrations, error messages, etc.? When I say integrations, I'm just talking about, uh, my app touching other applications. So it might be just with flow. Microsoft flows. It might be, uh, linked to a model driven app or Dynamics 365 CE. So any connections, uh, with this app, it might be just an Excel. So that's what I meant by integrations or whatever DBs this app is going to touch. Um, licensing requirements. So there is a link, uh, on my screen. Uh, you can check out licensing requirements. It's important to tell the client upfront about the licenses, the prices, um, they're going to incur, um, things. So basically if they jump onto this website, they'll be very clear. It's quite simple, uh, very well written on the website. So it's important to tell them about licensing as well. Uh, I've included it as, it as part of feature list. Um, also when we were talking about, uh, navigation and functionalities, uh, think about it as business processes. So if you are a functional consultant, you would be well aware of this, that when you're doing requirement gatherings, you need to understand business processes. Um, here as well, you'll have to do that. So when you're building your screens and you're jumping from one to the other and there's a trigger happening, you're performing some actions, these are all business processes. It's always good to understand that, that what's the sequence of things happening and then you can produce a business process or a mobile app process or an app process um, out of these discussions you're having with your client. The next one is it's quite so it's very lightly taken uh, I call it finer details uh, we think that uh, it's available, we can do it and whatnot, but these are the finer details and why I'm calling them because everybody is very specific about what kind of font they would prefer, what's the font size, um, the weight, the style, etc., etc. So you can read the slide, uh, definitely it's on your screen, uh, but why I'm saying these are finer details, if you know that a lot of, if you are a D365 consultant, um, a lot of your clients must have asked you to change the font um, type uh, in that model driven app, but you can't do it. Change the color of how uh, the font color. 
um, but you can't do it. It's unsupported and stuff like that. But here you can achieve it. You can have multiple font um, styles and font colors uh, and that too based on conditions as well. If you know it very well, you can do that. So since it is a mobile app, it is way more user friendly and hence it's all about user experience and how easily they can navigate uh, through the app. And hence, I've included final details as part of your requirement gathering. You must talk about these details, uh, whether, whether they would like a logo on top of the screen, whether it's top right, top left, bottom right, bottom left, center of the screen. These things matter. Um, the marketing team, uh, in the organization would help you in getting, uh, the placement right of a logo. What should be the screen backgrounds? Would the screen backgrounds change every screen? Would it be different for guests and business users and things like that? You will have to focus on this. Icons are important as well. And all of this, when you, whenever you're talking about, uh, screen, screen backgrounds, icons, um, logos, you must talk to the web dev team or the marketing team about their copyrights and trademarks uh, and generally the organization will provide you the one which they have created and you'll not have to google it just in case you have to google it there's a filter when you search images on google on the right hand side just below the search button you have this tool um, drop down click on that and say uh, allowed to reuse or allowed to reuse with modification and stuff like that. What I'll do, I'll just quickly jump on uh, Google and show it to you. So let's say logo I'm searching and here I'll click on images. You see a lot of beautiful images are there, but they are not for reuse. So you click on tools and then you click on usage rights. So labeled for reuse, labeled for reuse with modification. So these are my preferred ones, which I use most of the time. Uh, and hence you should always keep that in mind. All right. So moving on to the next one. So after the requirement document, after the requirements are done, um, we must produce a document because that's how we do as consultants, business requirement document, functional requirement document, technical design document and functional design document and what not document. A lot of people today have, um, have, have this uh, thought process that documents uh, are not important. We can just to uh, use the stories, but you miss a lot of steps there. My suggestion when you are building power apps, is either to sketch it, do a wireframe, things like that, basically wherein you can immediately show it to your client that this is what I'm assuming it should look like. And it, it shouldn't be perfect. It's just a wireframe or just uh, drawing it on your notebook. I know a lot of people hesitate to use pens these days, uh, but you can definitely do this. It helps the client. It helps you. Uh, if you can show them quickly enough after the session requirement session, they will be saying yes or no to it or maybe to it. And that's where you know that your thought process is not aligning with the expectation of your client. So you can immediately improve it and which, and that's good, right? Because then you'll be able to provide a better outcome to your client and they'll be satisfied. Customer delight. Okay, let's talk about this. In your document, what should be there? So there should be objective, which you discussed initially with your client. So app objective and the objective, uh, you will write it down. You will definitely do the scope. So scoping is very important because otherwise the expectations of both parties would be different. So it's important to define the scope. Um, when so, and, and then I talked about user journeys as well. So since you have done user journey mapping and you, you have spoken to different user groups, um, you will be able to create user stories. That's my next tip. But what I'm trying to tell you is you have created user stories as a business user or a functional consultant. What about uh, the real tech things involved 
in the power up you're going to build. So that's where I'm saying when you're defining the scope, extract the technical information from your user stories. So these are kind of interlinked. Um, business processes. So when I was talking about functionalities, triggers and actions, and you are looking at the entire feature list, define business processes, how the app process would work for a guest. Uh, how would it work when they're logging in? How would it work when they're signing up? How would it work after they have completed the registration? These are just examples I'm providing, but you'll be able to create processes out of this and include that in your document. It will either help you or another partner or another team member of yours, whosoever is building the app in future, if you want to extend it, you'll be able to refer that this was the process. And it, since it is a visual, it's easier and less time consuming to understand instead of going through a lot of words. Um, include the feature list in there, include the integration points, um, effort estimation. So if you have not yet done it already, um, just include some estimation that this is going to take this much time. Um, timeline and milestones, it's important. When are you doing what? and so it, it sets the expectation right. So you can say in, in seven days time, I'll be delivering these two screens and they should be working perfectly fine. Or you can do it process wise. So in seven days time, I'll deliver process one. In 10 days time, I'll deliver, deliver both process one and process two. Hence I said timeline, uh, and milestones are important. Uh, the last, sorry, just got a message. Um, roadmaps, so uh, build the blocks, what you're delivering. Again, timeline, milestones, roadmap all go hand in hand. So you, you very well understand what project roadmap is, what you're doing, the journey of your project, what issue is getting resolved in what block of this roadmap. That's what this is about. And then you have constraints and assumptions. It's very important to always list down all your assumptions when you are uh, providing a client a document. So that's where you will include constraints and assumptions. Um, whatever constraints you feel that, let's say, um, the client's team uh, is going on vacation or they're at a different location and they'll not be able to provide their time and whatnot, you can include everything like that under constraints. Assumptions, again, you can say that you would require uh, two days every week uh, for business requirement gathering um, for, let's say, next four weeks. So, so the client then can dedicate their resources or team to talk to you so that you can provide them with a better product. All right, so that was episode two. Um, do let me know in the comment section if you like it, if it does help you. Um, remember the objective of the series is that at the end of the series, you'll be able to build your own app. You'll be able to help your team. Um, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Thank you.